Hey y'all, it's me, Barbecue, and welcome back to Hot or Rot. Today, we'll be reviewing episode three of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. Our 14 queens were finally united as one and challenged to serve three looks in the Mother Ball. Categories are Mother Goose, Classic Nursery Rhyme, Significant Mother, Famous Favorite Mom, and Call Me Mother, Father Eleganza. Outfits that serve Mother created using provided menswear. Plus, we've got some major drama going down between Plain Jane and a mandatory meeting, both on the show in Untuck and online all over Twitter. So we'll get into that after we review all 42 looks. So let's get to it in the order they hit the runway. First up, Geneva Carr, who for her Mother Goose fantasy is giving us little Miss Muffet who sat in her tuffet. Eating her curds and whey? I think is how that goes. And I will say she did a great job, I think, of bringing in the different elements from this classic nursery rhyme. But to me, this outfit was a strange combination of not enough and doing too much. Because the tuffet bustle skirt situation going on, I think, is very awkward to look at. I'm sure attaching it to the waist like she did had more to do with the outfit being able to support itself than it being an active design decision. But I don't think it worked. And really, I could have used other layer of tuffet at the very bottom of this tuffet because there's that awkward gap, which I think visually just looks a little strange. So I give this look a rot. And for Significant Mother, she chose a look worn by Selma Hayek, which is pretty and did pop for Selma on a red carpet. However, on a Drag Race runway, as we've seen, these all black or all white looks often just get totally washed out. But Geneva's bigger issue is that because of the main part of the garment she's wearing is totally see-through, we can see a hem going down the front of her body and on her arm. And it looks like there's like a sleeve cap at the top of her shoulder. And so we get this very PC effect. And for those reasons, I'm going to give this like a soft rot. And for her mother and father, Eleganza, she says she is serving us some military boss wearing pieces of a deconstructed suit attached to some stretch blue fabric. And off the bat, her biggest issue was, I think, missing the brief of Eleganza. There's nothing glamazon or sparkly or baba voom about this, and it does ultimately just look like pieces of a cut up suit jacket attached to a bodysuit at the top and bottom. And the pieces that are attached really look unfinished, especially where she's drawing a lot of attention up at the neck area. Mother did not arrive the ball for me tonight, this was a rock. Next we've got Dawn, who is one of our seamstresses of the cast. Let's see how she did. For Mother Goose, she's giving us cushy cow, which she is representing in a red dress, pants, corset, sleeves, gloves with a cow hide on top and a cowbell and hooves instead of shoes and horns and ears and a giant wig with a crown. And oh my God, there is a lot going on with this look, which from a distance has an okay effect. But the closer you get to this look, you see there's so much chaos in all of the decisions to over accessorize and over drape and adorn every inch of this look that it just creates a lot of messiness. And it just didn't work for me. This was a rot. But her Audrey Hepburn's significant mother look was, I think, serving mother. And I thought it was really cool how she was able to so clearly maintain and nail the reference while at the same time adding flavors and detail to make it feel very much her own with the white scarf and the white hat. And you know, those sexy little hip cutouts. My only complaint is I wish the hat and scarf were a little daintier to match the overall daintiness of the look that she's going for here. But overall, I definitely give this a hot. And finally, moving into Mother Father Eleganza, she says she's giving us a little bit of construction worker fantasy, and I do see that with those boots coming all the way up her thigh and turning into the overalls that are attached to the top part of the look. Where she really lost me though was the inside of the look. It just looked randomly bunched up and disconnected from the cape and the boots. Overall, it's just over accessorized and there's too much happening, but I would give this look eh, warming up. And next up we've got Hershey LaCour Jeté, who's giving us Bernie B for her Mother Goose nursery rhyme and girl, she really is giving the only queen bee in this look. Like that giant jacket collar thing with the Pattern B fur hanging from the chain around it was so camp and fun and fashion. And the silhouette she achieved overall was incredible. The only thing I think she probably should have added to really make everything pop is to put a little yellow eyeshadow right into that corner of her eye. It would have totally opened up her face and just brought the look together. But buzz buzz bitch, this look is <laughs> And the significant mother she has chosen is Mother Earth, Gaia, Pangea. And she came out and I thought immediately that latex gown is cute. Plus the camp of her being in the confessional and saying it's latex and it's very hot, just like global warming. <laughs> But where she lost me with this look were like the leaves or flames or scales. I don't know what that was on the top of her dress and like the, um, on one of her sleeves. So this for me was a soft rot. And finally, we get into her mother, father, Eleganza look, which what I'll say that I like about this is the realness. Like this is a real woman. We've seen her. We know her. And this everyday pedestrian couture is absolutely camp. But what it's not giving is Eleganza. These are jeans literally pulled off the rack of materials they were given to create looks combined with 
a top that I think she sewed like towels as sleeves or, or washcloths or something. I don't know what that material is there. And this look really is all over the place. I don't know what she was thinking with that hair that has the gold streak and then the gold heels. I, it was just a completely different vibe from the middle part of her body, but it was what it was, and it was a rot. Next, we got Mirage. For her first look, she's giving us a little bit of Baba Black Sheep, Have You Any Wool, Mother Goose Nursery Rhyme Fantasy. And this look feels a little pedestrian to me. It kind of just looks like she added a bunch of feathers to a crop top and a skirt, which is also confusing because I thought this nursery rhyme was supposed to be about wool, and there's not a shred on her. And the only thing sheepy about what she's got going on are those ears on her head, which are kind of looking sad and droopy. I'm not buying it. This look for me is a rot. And for Significant Mother, she chose La Llorona. And if you don't know who La Llorona is, here we have from Wikipedia. La Llorona is a vengeful ghost in Latin American folklore who's said to roam near bodies of water, mourning her children whom she drowned in a jealous rage after discovering her husband was cheating on her. So there's that. <laughs> like it's really sick and twisted that she chose this as her significant mother, but also hilarious in a really dark way. And the way she chose to represent this character is in a skin tone illusion bodysuit that is wrapped in her own wet hair, covering up all of her bits and bobs. And she also adorned this look with some water droplet looking crystals, but I would have liked to have seen a lot more of those. Because what she did is a serve. I just feel like she's sitting on the edge of these two ideas of glamorous and dirty, filthy ghost. But I had fun with this look, and I'm gonna give it a <laughs> And for her final look, Mother Father Eleganza, she says that she's painted on a black eye because her dad was a boxer in the army. And... I don't know what that means. But aside from that confusing the hell out of me, the actual outfit she's created is not that bad. She seemed to be stressing out and really having a time with this in the workroom, but she honestly served it on the runway. It's giving me like a little deconstructed cadet Kelly crawled out of a swamp. I think she did a pretty good job turning nothing into something. I would give this a soft hot. And next we've got Megami. For her mother goose, she is giving us little Bo Peep. And immediately I loved this look. There's a lot of whimsy here. And I love how it's kind of a deconstructed little Bo Peep. Like the giant hoop skirt and all those different colors and layers of the polka dot chiffon or tulle fabric, really pretty. I would give this look a <laughs> And first time we get mother, she has chosen Lady Gaga. The look she is recreating here is from the telephone video. Video. And indeed, it does look like Megami struggled a bit with this look. It's giving more a collection of clear trash bags that have been roughly shaped into the silhouette she was going for. And I think the material she chose was a little too transparent. We kind of lost the fashion in it. And like, it's not a bad look. It just doesn't, I think, truly live up to the original or expand upon it in any new meaningful ways. So I give this look a soft rot. And finally, from Mother Father Eleganza, she is giving us, trend alert, construction worker realness. Her and Don are about to start a contracting company. Y'all better watch out they're gonna get these houses built for america we have a housing shortage but not anymore <laughs> not with these two on the business and for this look she says she's serving rosie perez meets rosie the riveter and i'm not really sure what about this was supposed to be rosie perez but i am getting rosie the riveter and i do like parts of this look like the crop jacket and the top part of the skirt that is made up of just denim but she's also got all these crazy accessories like the actual workers work belt with gloves and tools but for the drag race runway it's just too much it's a lot of visual visual clutter, but it was a cool enough look overall, so I'd give this like a three flame hot. And next we've got a mandatory meeting who we learned this episode is a paper eater when she ate the printed out results that RuPaul came into the workroom and handed the girls for their Raida Queen in the prior episodes. Anyways, from Mother Goose, she is giving us a little... And when I saw this, I was like, wow, she really is competing for the worst look ever on RuPaul's Drag Race with herself from the alien runway last week. Like actually, what the hell is this? It's wild, it is wild. She's got four giant dead cats on her arms that I think are all sewn together in like a cape wrapped around, I don't know what the hell is on her body, like a blue lampshade, complete with when she turns around an actual cry for help written on a sign in red paint. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was about, but we did very recently see on Willow Pill's dollhouse, a very similar help written on it. This look is a rot, but oh my God, for significant mother, she mothered. She mothered hard. She came out of season six Michelle Visage straight off the J train, complete with that classic Michelle hair leopard print everywhere and her signature pair of giant money makers, which all comes off wig and chest plate included to reveal the new refreshed Michelle Visage. This was camp. This was serving mother. Amanda, this was awesome. And this look is totally hot. And for her final look, she takes us all the way to the board of directors in this business CEO realness look. 
And I just have to say, her drag is really something. Her drag is almost like an unintentional parody of drag in the 2016, 17, 18 era. Like this is just one of those looks that is so bad for me. It's coming back around to good because there's so much camp ridiculousness happening here. <laughs> And there was certainly a fantasy felt, so I would give this a warming up. And next up, Morphine. For Mother Goose, she's giving us a man and a maid. And you guessed it, a sexy maid's costume. And overall, I'd say this is a really clean look. Black and white latex is super well done, and her body is body yaddy yaddy -ing. My only issue here is there's no expansion upon the idea or concept of just being a maid. And for a nursery rhyme category, I was looking for a little more whimsy, because this is ultimately just a, a better version of what you might get at the Spirit Halloween store or Doll's Kill. I, trust me, I know, I've got a couple of looks that look just like this. But I can't say she doesn't look gorgeous. This look is definitely high. And for a significant mother, she's giving us Kris Jenner, the original momager. And I love here seeing Morphine embrace the stupid stupidity in camp of doing something like Kris Jenner on the runway with her camcorder. She's got recording the judges. And I really do love how she's made this her own with the cuts of the fashion, especially in the jacket being asymmetrical and such. The bitch looks great in a bob. This was <sighs> But her mother father Eleganza was actually, I think, the weakest of her three looks. And even she admitted in the confessional, I don't know what look I was trying to go for. <laughs> which we can tell, we can tell that because girls, there's a witch hat. She's got tassels coming down on her sleeves, denim, and then this random piece of fabric that is like clips to the front of the panty line and then circling back around the back with her butt cut out to show off the BBL. And the thing is, I definitely don't hate this look. It's just messy, but it is glamorous and giving eleganza, I think in a way that many other looks didn't tonight. So I'd give this a safe, very safe bordering. Three flame hot. And so we got Maya on the page for our first look giving us Mary's Canary in an all yellow, beautiful, honestly, pageant gown. And the judges kind of called her out for the feathers that are blocking her face, yes. But I will say I kind of was living for the camp of her face hiding until she wanted to show it to you. That was like really giving me that's part of the show. That's what's intended. And I liked it. Sue me. My only question in this look is where is the whimsy? Where is the nursery rhyme element? Because yes, she is a yellow canary bird, but I don't know, maybe putting a beak on or having a cage or something would have tapped into that childhood fantasy of a nursery rhyme a little bit better. That said, yes, this look is hot. But for significant mother, <laughs> she just look him and I'll say for Lil' Kim, I don't think this was a particularly good choice of outfit to recreate. Like there are so many more truly iconic looks that she's done on red carpets or for award shows like the seashell look. And how she has chosen to appear as Lil' Kim today is questionable. Giant green paint is giving diaper and the trench coat makes her completely lose any shape she had from this look. And it is overall just way too much fabric bunching up in strange places, creating all this bagginess in the look. So it is gonna be a Rat. And unfortunately, Maya doesn't have a great finish with her mother, father, Eleganza look. She says she's going for a rocker punk fantasy. I do get that with the safety pin septum. And honestly, the crop jacket and train she's made, I think are pretty good. But the dress that she has on is not dressing. The dress is not dressing, y'all. It literally is not covering very important parts of her body. And there are some straps on that that are not doing a damn thing. Plus, I think she relied on her giant black thigh hat boots a little too much here. Somebody give us a rat. And next up, we got Q, one of our seamstresses in this cast. And for Mother Goose, she is giving us the man in the moon, which is so gorgeous. I mean, look at this the craftsmanship in her looks is incredible stunning like just admire all of the ornate detailing in the top and in that moon cap she's wearing my only issue with this look is i think it's so deep into the nursery rhyme theatricality of all of that it does ultimately appear a little more theater stagey than rupaul's drag race runway which is both a compliment and critique so i'm gonna give this look a <laughs> And for Zenivia Mother, she has chosen Judy Garland in her iconic poppy dress. And again, truly stunning. The craftsmanship in her looks is incredible. And the attention to detail here of the microphone having the cord that trails off into the imperceivable distance behind the stage. That's a wow. She mothered down boots. Yes, God, this look was hot. And the mothering continues into her mother, father, Eleganza look. This was incredible. And truly the first look in this category on the runway to actually goop and gag me. Like I so clearly see the punk rocker Vivian Westwood edgy thing she's going for combined with a really 
more intricate and feminine beauty that I think we're starting to learn is Q and her personality with that little fascinator on top of her head and that giant collar. She should be so proud of this and it was totally hot. And next up, Dame Mas Leche. It's Nymphia Wind, who, oh my God, mothered down so hard in this challenge. For her Mother Goose nursery rhyme, she is serving us some little boy blue in the most gorgeous little blue boy outfit. <laughs> we have ever seen ever the choice of texture and tones and fabrics in the outfit she has created here are just immaculate and she has captured 100 of the over the top too muchness of this fashion era and made it so whimsical in the way she's played with the placement of all these bows throughout her look this look was hot and for a significant mother y'all i gooped and gagged when i saw this she's chosen angelina jolie's iconic wedding dress which had the drawings and colorings of all of her children on the train this shaping the little flower tie detailing in the front that's like heavy enough to make the cord look like a stem for the flower and the fact that she has all of her drag daughters from Taiwan that have added their art to the train of this gown I mean it's just such a beautiful beautiful look both in terms of fashion and I think what it ultimately means to her and her drag. It's a truly gorgeous look that I did take off half a flame here because I was looking for a veil considering it is a wedding dress, but that's a small complaint. It's absolutely hot. And finally for the design challenge, she has created one of the best design challenge looks of all time across all seasons. This is insane that she did this. The wiring she has used in the ties to make them stand out and stick in different places. And the way she's placed all those crazy patterns against these really simple brown and beige neutrals with the pop of yellow in the boots at the bottom, which is beautiful and also her signature color. And the way everything about this feels so intentional, elevated, next level, and just beyond RuPaul's Drag Race. We'll just say that. This look is hot. And next up, we have Sapphira Cristal, who comes out as a giant pumpkin for her Mother Goose runway, giving us Peter, Peter, Pumpkin Eater. It was a show and a half to watch her do this. And I loved all of the details, like how the pumpkin was painted with white to create light and shininess on top and then darker underneath with shadow and the little feet tendrils coming out and her body being the stem and the one eye it was incredible. I also love that it reminded me of Pumpkin, the King of Ghosts, the monster from Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, you couldn't tell me that this was not directly inspired by that. Safira said, it's time to did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, duel. This look is hot. And for significant mother, she is giving the most significant mother of all time. It is Eve. And what I love so much about Safira's drag is the commitment to presentation and storytelling and everything she does. Like, have we seen the concept of Eve or a woman in a bedazzled cat suit on the drag race runway before? Yes, many times. But have we ever seen Eve with these braids down to the floor that are absolutely gorgeous, carrying the bones of a snake whose skin we can see she is now wearing as heels and wrapped around her baby. This was hot. And for her final look, she says she's serving Roberta the Builder. Of course, standing up to join the construction crew formed by Megami and Don, but Safira here would be the momager manager of this entire little crew. This is a really clean look from her. And I love that stark contrast between the yellow plaid cat suit and the denim overalls and giant poofy ruffled denim skirt. And there's just a lot of intentionality and clean lines here. But I do feel it's missing a tad of eleganza or extra theatricality that we saw in her prior two looks. Plus, I hate the boot that she has on with this like I think a boot cover or something really would have brought everything together down there but sometimes the shoe's just a shoe and I would give this look a <laughs> next up all aboard the shade plane it's plain Jane who <laughs> There was a lot going on with her this episode. We'll get to the drama in a bit, but let's talk about her looks. For Mother Goose, she's giving us <laughs> cat by the fire. And overall, I would say this is a pretty look. I really enjoy the cat ears in the wig and how she played with the different peekaboos of the outfit on the runway. But I don't think it was much more than a pretty lady in a blue boudoir outfit. Like we've seen this idea many times before. And in this category, I was looking for just a little more whimsy and camp because it's gorgeous and hot, but I think missing a spark. And this significant mother she's chosen to pay homage to on the runway is Octomom. And the way she's chosen to do that is in a glamorous rhinestone hospital gown, carrying seven of the babies she's delivered so far as she walks down the runway. And then <gasps> there comes the eighth one on the floor. There it is, which she leaves there and then walks the runway with the rest of the babies draping down the front of her look. And I do love the commitment to stupidity and camp in this look, but I do feel she maybe relied a little too much on the joke. And I wanted to see a little more fashion out of 
a look like this. But I would still give this look a hot. And for Mother Father Eleganza, she is giving us full glam. It feels very like 90s with the chains draping off on the different sides. And I love the cutouts that she's got in the top part of this jacket. She did a great job tapping into the femininity in this Eleganza. There was just something though, I think a bit off with the execution of the skirt. And the pieces all looked good, like zoomed in and stuff. But there was something about the openness of it that accentuated how different her tights color was to her actual skin tone. That made a little jarring and fourth wall breaking. But the look is still hot. Next up, Tsunami Muse, who for Mother Goose is giving us a little Humpty Dumpty fell off a wall. And this look really got me. It really got me, gal. It was so stupid and full of personality, which made me so happy to see because I feel like Zunami has been giving us a lot of runways that are pretty, but I'm like, where is Zunami in this? And here we get to see, oh, she's got a great sense of humor. She's literally a giant egg when she comes out on the runway that cracks into a sexy little cocktail dress of albumin and yolk with the little egg fascinator in the wig. Girl, this is great. From beginning to end, she gave us camp and stupidity and she also gave us fashion. She served and ate. This was hot. And for Significant Mother, she has chosen her drag mother, Candy Muse. This was really, really great in the sense that it was also silly and stupid to do Candy Muse for Significant Mother, but looked so good on the runway. Like she really did serve that. And she had the Candy Muse radio that she pressed play on at the end of the runway. This was absolutely hot. But where Miss Tsunami did slip up a little bit for me tonight was in the Mother Father Eleganza look. The skirt and top, I think individually are good pieces. She's giving me schoolgirl meets business executive, but she kind of lost me with some of the proportions like in the tie. And I thought the awkwardness of the puffy thing coming off her back and on like a bustle were just too strange next to the sharp lines on the inside of the look. Plus I really hated the untransformed Argyle sock. They were only giving me father, no mother or Eleganza. But all things considered, this look is still hot. And finally, girl, take a sip of water. This is an incredible amount of runways to review. I am tired. And finally, we have Plasma, who is giving us Tweedledee and Tweedledum in her Mother Goose outfit. This was a weird one. Yo, this was a weird look. <laughs> and I kind of like it and I also kind of hate it. Like literally having her twin on the stomach with the ass hanging out in the back was a goop and a gag. But the anatomy was really funky and some of the execution of that was weird as Dawn pointed out and untucked. And the other interesting thing about this look was she had her twin's face kind of painted like Michael Jackson, but the fact that her twin was fully nailed, like did y'all catch that? Kind of a serve. So I'm gonna give this a 3-5 hot. And for Significant Mother, she's giving Anne Boleyn who was yes, infamously beheaded. And the gal she is wearing is super gorgeous. I mean, the construction, the material, the purling on the bodice, absolutely gorgeous. My only critique on the actual look is because it's a drag look, I did want a bigger collar or headpiece situation going on. And I will also say, I think she missed a big opportunity in tapping into the lore of this woman being beheaded. Because without really acknowledging that in any way in the look, she's just giving a pretty dress and I'm not getting the why. But it is pretty, so I'm gonna give it a hot. But for Mother Father Eleganza, she says she's giving us her biological mother, Stacy, in this gown, which is great for her. Stacy, if you're listening, turn this video off. I won't mince words. This is hideous. This is a horrible gown. I don't know what possessed her to chunk together these giant slabs of gray and black into really a pretty shapeless gown. It's an incredibly drab look, especially for Plasma, who from what we've seen doesn't really have an issue incorporating whimsy, camp, or fashion into her over-the-top looks. This is just not that. So I'm gonna give it a which covers all 42 looks on this mother tucking runway. Oh my God. And the other twist of this episode is we see the queens all do the Rated Queen system one final time. I absolutely love, I love this system. They should do it every single episode. It creates so much opportunity for alliance, drama, backstabbing. Plus it probably feels much more fair to them to have their peers rank them instead of the judges. Well, let's talk about those rankings. My final flame rankings across the three categories were Nymphia, Q, and Sephira in that order. Order, which is the same top three chosen by the cast. My bottom three differed slightly being Hershey, LaCour, Jete, a mandatory meeting, and Geneva Carr, which was the same as the bottom three chosen by the cast, except swap Amanda for Maya. And I will say my scores were weighted equally, but if I had added more weight to the design challenge, I think Amanda would not have been in my bottom three. And this week, Rue gives the win to Nymphia Wind, which was probably the easiest decision Rue will have to make all season. This Look, all three looks were incredible from her. The Nymphia windstorm is blowing through, baby. And it's hot. <laughs>
For the bottom two lip sync, we've got Geneva Carr and Hershey LaCour Jeté. And I did react to this lip sync as well as this entire runway in my exclusive reaction video, which I've uploaded to my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like access to those reaction videos and early access to my YouTube videos. And you can join my Patreon and help support the channel by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But as far as scoring this lip sync, I would give both queens hot. I thought Geneva had a slightly technically better lip sync, but it felt like maybe Hershey was a little more entertaining in some spots, bringing the camp and comedy with her silly little dance moves. And finally, we've got, as prophesized by Mistress Isabel Brooks last week, the drama between Plain Jane and a mandatory meeting. And this all started earlier this week when Drag Race was dropping clips from this episode in Untucked. We see Plain Jane straight up tell a mandatory meeting that she doesn't like her drag. <laughs> And that she hopes it gets better as the season progresses because it's not giving. And <laughs> it was so out of pocket, left field, completely out of nowhere. The bitch sat down on the couch and said, I don't like your drag. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I'm like, guess what? The internet gagged, we gagged, we goofed. It was a good reality TV moment. We'll just say that. But in response to these clips on Twitter, we see Amanda saying she wishes she could say more, but the NDAs are still intact. Followed up with some tweets reading. Sure, I may have looked hideous at the beginning of last summer, but nothing could be more hideous than a hating ass bitch. I already fixed my mug, but I hear the other thing is a long-term condition. Hope that girl gets better someday. With a follow-up tweet saying, and before anyone starts acting crazy in her comments, no, I don't condone any hate toward her. If you want to go send her hate, you should be one of her fans instead because y'all act real similar. Mirror emoji. And in response, we see Plain Jane writing, Fix is subjective, mama. But yes, I'm Team Amanda all the way. F those naysayers still calling you hideous. Little do they know, you're well on your way from drag incompetence to drag mediocrity like the rest of us. Heart emoji. To which Amanda replied, I liked the tweet you deleted better. And I didn't catch what the deleted tweet was, but on some Reddit threads, it seems some people are sharing a screenshot where she made a joke about a mandatory makeup class. But I'm not actually able to verify the authenticity of this, so we'll move on. In response to Amanda Tori's tweet, Plain writes, sell the fantasy, baby. And then the very next day, January 18th, we have a mandatory meeting posting a video of her being absolutely mugged down on Twitter. Like seriously, what? an incredible makeup improvement, where she wrote, no, and the thing is, you can clearly see that I mugged with anger and vengeance in my heart this night, sigh emoji. To which Plain Jane quote tweets, writing, yes, sister, I'm telling you, anger and vengeance makes us stronger and is the fuel for all slayage. Where Amanda responded, happy to add you to the group of men whose nasty rude behavior has made me stronger in life. My dad, ex-husband, and ninth grade algebra teacher are so excited to meet you. And uh, Plain Jane wrote in response, what doesn't kill you makes you saltier. And the very next day, January 19th, we have a a tweet from Amanda reading, no, because as shitty as it felt to have her come for me and have to keep my cool, feeling like my sisters had my back in the moment more than made up for it. Love you, Morphine, Dawn, Plasma, Tsunami, Mirage. Which we see Plain responding to saying, by come for you, you mean voice the exact same opinion that all the people that you tagged were so comfortable sharing in their confessionals. Okay, girl, you know the name of the game. You know this is TV. I don't get why you're trying to play the victim as if you didn't clap back. Yawning. Heart. And as of the time I'm recording this video, it doesn't seem Amanda has responded to Jane's latest tweet about her. So that's where we'll leave our feud today. I'd love to know though in the comments below, are you team playing Jane or are you team a mandatory meeting? Or are you team just eating your popcorn and enjoying the drama? Because that's the team I'm on. Anyways, let's talk hottest hots for this runway. Wow, 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 wow. In Mother Goose, I'm gonna give it to Zanami Muse. For Significant Mother, I'm gonna give it to Q. And for Mother, Father, Eleganza. Put your hands together, ladies, gentlemen, germs, worms, theys, others, for Nymphia Wind. And of course, I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hots, and this week they've chosen Sephira Crystal, Q, and Nymphia Wind, respectively. Don't forget, though, that you too can vote on hottest hot polls and get your patron icon featured in every one of my videos at my hottest hot tier over at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. I finally want to say thanks so much to you for watching today's video and give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungart, Child Free Mateau, Dorothy Hall, Felicia Frankie, Laura, Matthew Burns, Stephen Topher, Tyler and Diximdi, and Will and Tana who are all supporting me at my Buzzy Queen Collector tier over at patreon.com slash buzzyqueen. See you later. Love ya. Bye.